Dear students, today we shall solve uh, some more problems on uh, continuity. Take the first question. Find the relationship between A and B. Find the relationship between A and B so that the function so that the function f of x is equal to f of x is equal to ax plus 1 when x is less than or equal to 3 ax plus 1 when x is less than or equal to 3 and bx plus 3 bx plus 3 when x greater than 3 ax plus 1 when x less than or equal to 3 and bx plus 3 if x is greater than 3 is continuous at x equal to 3 is continuous at x equal to 3 okay. students here we are not asked to prove that this function is continuous at x equal to 3 the question in the question itself they have already given that this function is continuous at x equal to 3 so if this is continuous at x equal to 3 then what is the relation between a and b that is what we have to find out. See, they have given that it is all continuous at x equal to 3. Since it is continuous at x equal to 3, according to the definition of continuity, I can write limit extends to 3 minus f of x, which means the left hand limit is equal to limit extends to 3 plus f of x, which is the right hand limit. That is equal to the form 3, the functional value value of the function at x equal to 3. Left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to functional value. See students here we are not proving that it is continuous. In the question itself they have given that this function is continuous at x equal to 3. Then what is the relation between a and b? That is what we have to find out now. Okay. So left hand limit extends to 3 minus f of x. When x approaches 3 from left side that means x is less than 3. Whenever x is less than 3, the function is defined as ax plus 1. That's equal to limit extends to 3 plus. Extends to 3 plus means x is approaching 3 from right side. When x approaches 3 from right side, the function is defined as bx plus 3. bx plus 3. That's equal to f of 3. At x equal to 3, the function is defined as ax plus 1. So, put x equal to 3 in that, we get 3a plus 2. Okay. Apply the limit here. 3a plus 1 is equal to, apply the limit here, 3b plus 3. Again, that is also equal to 3a plus 1, which we have written already here. So, now we have 3a plus 1 is equal to 3b plus 3. Bring this 3b to LHS and take this 1 to RHS we get 3a minus 3b is equal to 2. This is the relation between a and b. Or if you want to write one more step, you can write a minus b is equal to 2 by 3. I'll take 3 as a common factor here. 3 into a minus b is equal to 2. Therefore, a minus b is equal to 2 by 3. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Show that, show that the function g of x is equal to x minus step x. Show that the function g of x is equal to x minus step x is discontinuous, is discontinuous. discontinuous at all integral points discontinuous at all integral points 
integral points means integers. We have to show that this function is discontinuous at all integers. Okay. So what we do here is we will take uh, one arbitrary integer. One arbitrary integer we will take, and we will show that at that point this function is discontinuous. And then we can say that the function is discontinuous at all integral points. Okay. So I will take uh, let k be any integer. K be any integer. Okay. Now I want to see whether this function we will see whether g of x is it continuous or not at k. So for that I find out left hand left hand limit is equal to limit x tends to k minus g of x. That's equal to limit x tends to k minus g of x. What is g of x? x minus step x x minus step x x we know step x the greatest integer function which is the greatest integer less than or equal to x oh now k is an integer limit extends to see according to the properties of limits you can apply the limit for these two separately i can write it like this limit extends to k minus x minus limit extends to k minus step x Okay. So k is an integer, x is approaching k from left side, then this x will be k itself. Now coming to this point, limit x tends to k minus step, one, step x. x. k is an integer and x is approaching k from left side. When x approaches k from left side, x is very close to k but less than k. x is very close to k but less than k, then step x value will be k minus 1. You will understand it better if I give you an example. Let me take uh, k is equal to 3. Then uh, what happens to limit x tends to 3 minus step x? Look here, limit x tends to 3 minus step x it means uh, x is approaching 3 from left side. x is very close to 3 but less than 3. When x is very close to 3 but less than 3, step x value will be equal to 2 because x is very close to 3 but less than 3. So x may take the values 2.9, 2.95, 2.99, etc. At all those points, the step x value will be equal to 2. Observe that. If I take k as 3, then uh, this limit value is equal to 2. So here, we will get k minus 1. Okay. k minus of k minus 1 will give you k minus k plus 1. k minus k plus 1. This is equal to 1. Left hand limit is equal to 1. Now I would like to find the right hand limit. Right hand limit that is equal to limit x tends to 3 plus sorry not 3 that was an example. Limit x tends to k plus g of x that is equal to limit x tends to k plus g of x. What is g of x? x minus step x. Now I'll find the limit for these two separately. This is equal to limit x tends to k plus x minus limit x tends to k plus step x. This is equal to limit x tends to k plus when x approaches k from right side x will, uh, will end to k itself minus when x approaches k from right side, step x, again I will go back to the same example, limit x tends to 3 plus step x. Its meaning is, x is approaching 3 from right side, when x approaches 3 from right side, x takes the values 3.1, 3.05, 3.01, 3.001, .01, etc. At all those points, step x value will be equal to 3. So similarly here, when x approaches k from right side, step x value will be equal to k. k minus k is equal to 0. Left hand limit is 1, right hand limit is 0, they are not equal. So limit does not exist. Hence, this function is discontinuous at x equal to k. Then, since k is any integer vertical, so k is an arbitrary integer, therefore this result is true for all integral values of k. So whenever k is an integer, g of x equal to x minus step x is discontinuous. In other words, we can say 
x minus step x is discontinuous at all integral points. The next question is, is the function is the function defined by is the function defined by f of x is equal to x square minus sin x plus 5 x is f of x square x square minus sin x plus 5 continuous at x equal to 5 continuous at x equal to 5 ok so the question is that given this function f of x equal to x square minus sin x plus 5 we have to check whether it is continuous or not at x equal to 5 ok is this function continuous at x equal to 5 that is what they are asking so we will find out limit x tends to pi f of x. See, there is no need to find out uh, left hand limit and right hand limit separately because to the left side of pi as well as to the right side of pi, the function is defined in the same way. So directly I will go for limit x tends to pi f of x. So limit x tends to pi f of x. f of x is x square minus sin x plus pi. x square minus sin x plus pi. Apply the limit, this is equal to, when I apply the limit, I am going to get pi square minus sin pi plus pi. Sin pi, sin pi value is 0, so this is equal to pi square plus 5. This is limit x tends to pi f of x. Students, we have seen that limiting value is equal to pi square plus 5. Now let us find out the function of that, f of pi f of pi, put x equal to pi here, we get pi square minus sin pi plus 5. Sin pi is 0, so f of pi is equal to pi square plus 5. Now it is evident that from these two, we can write limit x tends to pi, f of x is equal to f of pi. Limit x tends to pi f of x is equal to f of pi. Therefore, f of x is continuous at x equal to pi. Continuous at x equal to pi. Find the value of k. Find the value of k if if f of x is equal to if f of x is equal to k x plus one f of x is equal to kx plus 1 if x is less than or equal to 5 and 3x minus 5 if x is greater than 5 is continuous at x equal to 5 is continuous at x equal to 5 okay. see here they have already given that this function is continuous at x equal to 5. By using that, we have to find out the value of k. Find the value of k if this function is continuous at x equal to 5. So, if this function is continuous at x equal to 5, immediately we can say that left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to the functional value. Left hand limit. Left hand limit means limit x tends to 5 minus f of x that is equal to the right hand limit which is limit x tends to 5 plus f of x that is equal to 
f of 5. Left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to the functional value. Okay. So now limit x tends to 5 minus f of x. x is approaching 5 from left side. When x approaches 5 from left side, it means that x is less than 5. So when x is less than 5, the function is defined as kx plus 1. That's equal to limit x tends to 5 plus f of x. Which means x is approaching 5 from right side. When x approaches 5 from right side, it indicates that x is greater than 5. When x is greater than 5, the function is defined as 3x minus 5. That's equal to f of 5. At x equal to 5, the function is defined as kx plus 1. Put, k, put x equal to 5, that will give you 5k plus 1. So here if I apply the limit, I am getting 5k plus 1 is equal to, here if we apply the limit, we get uh, 3 into 5 15 minus 5, which is also equal to 5k plus 1, that we have already written here, so 5k plus 1 is equal to 10, 5k equal to 9, and therefore k is equal to 9 by 5, k is equal to 9 by 5, okay, left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to the function value. On solving that, we got k equal to 9 by 5. Okay. Let's go to the next question. Again, in this question also, we are asked to find the value of k. Find the value of k if f of x is equal to kx plus 1 if x is less than or equal to pi and cos x if x is greater than pi is continuous at x equal to pi. Okay. So now, here in this question also, they have asked us to find the value of k and they have given that the function is continuous at x equal to pi. So if this function is continuous at x equal to pi, then what is the value of k? That is what they are asked. Okay, see, we don't have to prove that this function is continuous. That is not what we are asked to do. They have already given that the function is continuous at x equal to pi. By using that, we have to get the value of k. So, since it is continuous at x equal to pi, I can write limit x tends to pi minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to pi plus which is also equal to f of pi, but f of pi value and left hand limit will be one and the same, hence uh, need not write. Or if you want, you can write also nothing wrong with f of pi. Okay. So now limit x tends to pi minus, x tends to pi minus. The meaning of this is that x is approaching pi from left side. When x approaches pi from left side, x is less than pi. When x is less than pi, the function is defined as kx plus 1. That's equal to limit x tends to pi plus. Pi plus means x is approaching pi from right side. When x is approaching pi from right side, uh, its meaning is that x is greater than pi. Whenever x is greater than pi, the function is defined as cos x. Okay, that's equal to f of pi. At the x equal to pi, see whenever x is less than or equal to pi, the function is defined as kx plus 1. So at the x equal to pi, if you put x is equal to pi, we get k pi plus 1. Okay, apply the limit here. k pi plus 1 is equal to, apply the limit here. Limit x tends to pi cos x. So that will give you cos pi. This is again k pi plus 1 only, which we have already here, so I am not writing it again. k pi plus 1 is equal to cos pi. Students, what is the value of cos pi? Yes, can you tell me? Yes, you are right. Cos pi is equal to minus 1. Okay, take that one with the RHS here. We get k pi is equal to minus 2, and therefore k is equal to minus 2 by pi. Okay, when I apply the limit, I got cos pi, which is minus 1. Taking this 1 to RHS, we get k pi equal to minus 2, and therefore k equal to 
माइनस टू बाई फाइव ओके लेट अस लुक एट वन मोर क्वेश्चन नाउ फॉर द सेम टाइम दें वे आर सुपर इन द वैल्यू ऑफ के फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ के इफ ये फॉर्म एक्स इज इक्वल टू के कॉस एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय पाइ माइनस टू एक्स के कॉस एक्स डिवाइडेड बाय पाइ माइनस टू एक्स इफ एक्स इज नॉट इक्वल टू पाइ माइनस टू एक्स एंड इट्स थ्री इफ एक्स इज इक्वल टू पाइ माइनस टू इज कंटिन्यूअस एट एक्स इक्वल टू पाइ माइनस टू ओके सो ये फाइंड द वैल्यू ऑफ के f of x is equal to k cos x by pi minus 2 x whenever x not equal to pi by 2 and it is 3 when x is equal to pi by 2 is continuous at x equal to pi by 2 so here it is in the question itself it is mentioned that this function is continuous at x equal to pi by 2 so if this is continuous at x equal to pi by 2 then what is the value of k that's what they are asking So now, given that this function is already continuous at x equal to pi by 2, so I can directly write limit x tends to pi by 2 f of x is equal to f of pi by 2. Okay. See here, there is no need to go for left hand limit and right hand limit separately. What is the reason behind it? You already know. I don't think I need to explain that again and again. Okay. So limit x tends to pi by 2 f of x is equal to f of pi by 2. So now limit x tends to pi by 2 f of x. What is f of x? K cos x divided by pi minus 2x. That's equal to f of pi by 2. At x equal to pi by 2, the function is defined as 3. Okay. So now we need to apply the limit here. When I apply the limit here. We get k into cos pi by two. What is the value of cos pi by two? Zero divided by denominator. What happens? Pi minus two into pi by two. If I substitute, two two gets cancelled. So you get a pi minus pi, which is also zero. So we are getting zero by zero, which is an indeterminate form. So directly we cannot uh, evaluate the limit. We should see some other method for this. Okay. Now. Mm, I'll write like this. Limit x tends to pi by two. K into cos x is there, na? No? I will write cos x as sine pi by two minus x. Cos x can be written as sine pi by two minus x, which we have already learned in trigonometry. That is sine pi by two minus theta is equal to cos theta. Or sine pi by two minus x is equal to cos x. So I'm writing cos x as sine pi by two minus x. Then from this pi minus two x, I will take a two as a common factor. If I take two as a common factor, then what will remain? Pi by two minus x. Here pi minus two x is there. I would like to take this two out. So if I take two out, we will have pi by two minus x. If you are in confusion, we take this two inside. Check whether we are getting back to this or not. If I take this two inside, two two gets cancelled. Here we will have pi minus here two into x into two x. Pi minus two x. So here I have taken two out. Okay. Now this is equal to three. If we know here. If you can, you can directly write this factor as one, because this looks like sine theta by theta. As we know, limit theta tends to zero. Sine theta by theta is equal to one. Limit theta tends to zero. Sine theta by theta equal to one. So if I use that, then we can directly write this as one. If you can understand it, well and good. See, now you may be thinking, sir, when uh, you write a sign, when you say sine theta by theta is equal to one, there the limit theta limit should be theta tending to zero. But here you have x tending to pi by two. 
it is true that x is tending to pi by 2 but i am trading this pi by 2 minus x as theta so when x tends to pi by 2 pi by 2 minus x will tend to 0 okay so if i have understood the well and good directly you can write this as 1 then k by 2 is equal to 3 that will imply k is equal to 6 that is the answer you can directly write it if you can understand okay if not then what to do i have so if you cannot directly write this as 1 then what we do is put pi by 2 minus x is equal to theta ok so I am making a substitution here I am taking pi by 2 minus x as theta now in any limit if you want to make a substitution then in the next step you have to change the limits also ok see here I am introducing a new variable theta and therefore that limit that should also be in terms of the new variable only here if it is if this expression is in terms of theta and this limit is in terms of uh, x that is not correct both should be in the same variable ok so for that what we need to do is as x tends to pi by 2 what will happen to theta that will be identified when x approaches pi by 2 when x goes to pi by 2 where will theta go that is what we have to find out so when x approaches pi by 2 where does theta go well, uh, theta tends to what value that is what we have to identify see when x is equal to pi by 2 if i substitute x is equal to pi by 2 then what will be the value of theta pi by 2 minus pi by 2 theta is equal to 0 so when x is equal to pi by 2 theta is equal to 0 therefore when x approaches pi by 2 theta will approach 0 ok so now make a substitution here we get i will write here limit x tends to pi by 2, I am replacing it by theta tends to 0, k into sin pi by 2 minus x, pi by 2 minus x, I am substituting it as theta sin theta divided by 2 into pi by 2 minus x, which is theta, RHS will be as this theta. Now, as theta tends to 0, this factor sin theta by theta becomes 1 k by 2 is a constant will remain as this k by 2 into 1 is equal to k by 2 k by 2 is equal to 3 therefore k is equal to 6 this is the answer k is equal to 6 Let's look at the next question. Find the values of A and B. Find the values of A and B such that such that the function defined by the function defined by f of x is equal to Five. If x is less than or equal to two, a x plus b. If x is greater than two but less than ten and twenty one. If x is greater than or equal to ten, is a continuous function. So, in the earlier uh, problems, we were asked to find out the value of k. In this question, we are asked to find the value of values of a and b. Okay. Now, they have given that this f of x is a continuous function. In the earlier problems, they had given one point. This function is continuous at x equal to 3, at x equal to pi by 2, etc. But in this question, they have given that it is a continuous function. If it is a continuous function, means where it is continuous, at which point it is continuous. What's your answer? Yes, you are right. It is continuous at each and every point in its domain. So for that, first let us say what is the domain of this function? 
domain means where and all what are the possible values of x so that the function f of x is well defined so where and all this function is defined it is defined for all values of x which are greater than or less than or equal to and between 2 to 10 also it is defined and when x is greater than or equal to 10 also it is defined which means the domain is the set of all real numbers this function is defined from minus infinity to plus infinity it is defined for all real values of x so now they have given that this function is a continuous function that tells us that it is continuous everywhere in other words it is continuous at each and every real point it at each and every real number okay so now in order to get the value of values of a and b which points shall we take we will take 2 and 10 why 2 and 10 because since it is continuous everywhere i will consider it is continuous at x equal to 2 also so if i consider x equal to 2 then left hand limit will be 5 right hand limit will be this is here i have to put x equal to 2 i am getting 2a plus b so i will get one relation in terms of a and b then at x equal to 10 if i take for left hand limit this is what i use and for right hand limit it will be 21 i will equate them ok so that will give you another relation in terms of a and b so now we have two equations in two unknowns a and b so we have two simultaneous we will have two simultaneous equations solve them to get the values of a and b that is what we have to do so we will consider since although it is continuous at every point uh, as far as to solve this problem as far as to get the values of a and b we should consider the continuity at x equal to 2 and at x equal to 10 because now you might ask me sir is it not continuous at x equal to 0 the answer is yes it is continuous at x equal to 0 also you take any real number it is continuous everywhere but then if i consider x equal to 0 there to the left hand limit i have to consider 5 because when x is less than or equal to 2 means when x is less than 0 also it is defined as 5 only and for right hand limit also I should consider 5 so what I am going to achieve by considering the continuity at 0 the thing that we are going to achieve is we will prove that 5 equal to 5 right which we already know so no point in going for uh, checking continuity at x equal to 0 we will consider the continuity at x equal to 2 and at x equal to 10 okay. so first I will consider at x equal to 2. At x equal to what happens? Limit x tends to 2 minus f of x is equal to limit x tends to 2 plus f of x which is equal to f of 2. Given that it is continuous everywhere, so it is continuous at x equal to 2 also. Left hand limit is equal to right hand limit is equal to the functional value. Okay. So, limit x tends to 2, left hand limit, x is approaching 2 from left side, then it is defined as 5, why should we consider this only, why not this, I don't think it requires any explanation now, so for right hand limit, I should consider ax plus b, then function value at 2 is defined as 5, apply limit as x approaches 2, 5 will remain as 5 only, apply limit here, we get 2a plus b, 2a plus b, this is also equal to 5, okay. I will call this as equation 1. Then, it is continuous at x equal to 10 now. So, so I will take at x equal to 10. At x equal to 10, left hand limit, that is, limit x tends to 10 minus f of x. Right hand limit, which is limit x tends to 10 plus f of x, is equal to f of 10 is equal to the functional value. Okay. So, left hand limit. When x approaches 10 from left side, the function is defined as ax plus b. Then, limit x tends to 10 plus, its meaning is that x is approaching 10 from right side. When x is greater than or equal to 10, the function is defined as 21. f of 10 at x equal to 10 also, the function is defined as 21. Apply the limit here, we get 10 a plus b is equal to 21, equal to 21 again. I take this as 2, equation 2. 
Okay. So here we have two a plus b is equal to five, and then we have ten a plus b is equal to twenty one. So we have two equations in two unknowns. So solve them to get the values of a and b. I'll go for equation two minus equation one. Equation two minus equation one. I will do ten a minus two a. That will give you eight a. B minus b gets cancelled. Twenty one minus five is equal to sixteen. This will give you a is equal to two. A is equal to two. I will substitute it in this equation. In equation two, that will give you twenty plus b is equal to twenty one, which means b is equal to one. So here we have the answer. A is equal to two and b is equal to one.
bring the two a to the side, we get seven a. Nine a minus two a, that will give you seven a. Seven a plus b is equal to fifty. I treat this as equation two. So here we have two equations. One is a plus b is equal to three, and the other equation is seven a plus b is equal to fifty. Now by solving these two equations. We can get the values of a and b. So I'll go for equation two minus equation one. That will imply seven a minus a that is six a. B minus b zero is equal to on our edges fifteen minus three which is equal to twelve. So we have six a is equal to twelve and a is equal to two. Here we have a plus b is equal to three in that a equal to two. Therefore b must be Top one. Okay, so students, uh, with this problem, I will stop today's class. So today, I have solved problems from the first exercise. Some of these problems are from first exercise. What are the problems I have left in the first exercise? You try them, and if you have any difficulties, you can always ask through WhatsApp. Thank you.